Hi there, watch this. So here I have a terminal and a video file up there. Let's press enter. And it's taking some time. But after a while the code is finished and it created this text file. Let's take a look at it. And as you can see here, it's filled with various timestamps. So this is a start time and this is an end time. But notice that this end time and this start time have a gap. There are a time sequence between those that doesn't exist. Same thing here, six seconds and suddenly eight seconds. And if we scroll down, there's like a, a bunch of them. The video duration is eight minutes and 54 seconds. And the end time is eight minutes and 53 seconds. Python code number two, hit enter. And we suddenly created modified timestamps. So we have changed the timestamps a tiny bit. If I separate these and I put them like next to each other, you can see here that we've added time. So this is the end time. And suddenly here we have a new end time. We kind of increased time. But now you need to keep your eyes open because a lot of things gonna happen. Python code number four, enter and a lot of things are suddenly happening here. Let's take a look at this folder. So we currently created a video segment of each timestamp. So for example, here we have four seconds, two seconds, one second, five seconds, six seconds, one second, four seconds. And if we zoom out, as you're looking at the code right now, they're all being concatted together. We have basically created individual videos from each individual timestamp and then we are putting those videos back together again into one single video. And the code is finished and boom, we have a new output, number two here, which is seven minutes and 59 seconds. If we look at the original video, it, we've basically dropped one minute from it. So what the Python code more or less did was create timestamps and then as you might have remembered, we had an end time and a start time and a gap between those time segments and we basically cut out those time segments. Resulting in a shorter video of about eight minutes, we basically dropped a total minute. The thing we removed, as you might have guessed from the thumbnail, are silent part in the original video. So here we have a sequence of codes. We use two, three and four that ran this sequence that basically created what you saw. And by the way, I don't usually do that. I just go sub 108 to basically do one to eight in a sequence. Just click one key instead. But if we take a look at number two here, which is the main one, then here is the code for you. You can copy paste this, print screen this and try to write it down if you want to. Now Python has a very cool plugin called audio segment and import detect silence. And if we look down here, we have a threshold of minus 50. That stands for decibels. So whenever the video is suddenly getting a minus 50 decibels, which basically means it's quiet, it's making a timestamp, so to say, from that. This is also in a duration of sorts. So once the audio have been in minus 50 decibels in one second, the thing I'm highlighted there, it will create a timestamp stop or a timestamp creation. The problem is that it's kind of tricky to actually copy this into my description below of the video because these segments here, these slashes are problematic for YouTube. So instead I will confess and say that ChatGPT made the Python code you just saw. And I will show you how to make ChatGPT actually write it for you. Or better, I might add, because eventually ChatGPT will be updated. So I will show you how to tell ChatGPT to give you this kind of code. And if ChatGPT have improved, which it usually does, it will give you a better code than the one I have. So the first thing we will write is here I have an input and then I give ChatGPT the direction, the path to the input. You need to change this yourself to the correct input that you want to affect. 
And then we need an output. I need a Python code that detects silence and create an text file output and then just write the text file output you want to create and where you want it to be created. I need the text file to have a timestamp of when the audio isn't silent. So the code should write in when the audio is below minus 50 decibels and it goes below minus 50 decibels. Or you write something like this. So start time should be when the audio goes above minus 50 decibels and the end time should be when it goes below 50 decibels. You can change the 50 decibels to depending on what you want. But if you change it to something like 30, you're going to cut out like small sounds, so to say, like these very quiet things that would still be considered a sound, just very quiet. And then let's click enter. And here it goes. It's writing things. And then you just copy paste this, bring it into your notepad plus C plus plus and you test it and you trial and error. The thing with ChatGPT is that you often have to like communicate with it and say, okay, this was correct, but can you change this thing? Or can you add that thing? Let's skip this third code because it actually isn't truly necessary. It is just something I added because I felt that I wanted to increase the time, but you don't really need it. The key other code is this one. As you can see here, this is the entire code. You can print screen and try to write it down if you want to. But once again, just like you saw in the video, this code is creating individual videos from the timestamps and then creating those in a folder and then concatting those videos back together again into one video. You could break this down into two codes. First have a code that is basically breaking down the original video into smaller pieces from the timestamps and then have a second code you run afterwards that is concatting them back together again. I will highly recommend that pathway instead because it's a little bit easier to communicate ChatGPT to do one thing instead of two things. But back with ChatGPT, you write the out input that was the output from the previous code, the text file output, the mons is awesome text that contained all the timestamps. Here I have a text file with some timestamps text inside it. It looks like this. You often need to just showcase some stuff for ChatGPT. The more information you give it, the easier it is to actually make the correct kind of code. And then we write something like what you see is start and end time. And then I have the number here stands for, I'm just showcasing an example what the timestamp actually stands for. We have minutes, seconds and milliseconds. I need a Python code that creates videos from these timestamps and create them in this folder. But we also need to give the code or the ChatGPT the input of the video we want to create the timestamps from. And then we can write something like, here is a video input, I need a Python code, can't spell. There we go, Python code that creates a mp4 videos from this video from the start and end time of the video showcased in the timestamp text file. Let's start with that. And here it goes again. It wants you to install MoviePy and here is the code. So we have the input, we have the output folder and we have the timestamp information. And when this runs, it's probably gonna have errors because the first time ChatGPT usually writes a code, it has errors. If you're watching this in the future, it's gonna have less errors as ChatGPT is mostly going to be upgraded and improved upon. Let's actually test this. So I'm going to click here, copy and call this test, edit with notepad, copy, paste, save. And for the lulz, let's run it. Test P, enter and error. Oh yeah, uh, sorry. Mons is, <laughs> we need to change this. There we go. Mons is awesome. Now it has the correct name. So let's write P on test P, enter, boom. It's, oh, okay, it works, it's working, okay. There we go. Yeah, I've kind of forgot that I put it in the wrong folder. Okay, let me explain, it worked. So we have a three seconds, two seconds, one second, five seconds. So I did a mistake, I will show you what I mean. So here is the original video, here is the, vi uh, let's actually delete that one. Here is the, the two timestamp text files. The problem is that, I told it to create the output videos in the same folder that I have the original video here. 
So we should have told the code, or actually what you can do is have a separate folder that you want that is usually empty all of the time that you target this code for to create these videos in. But what you can do here is basically create a folder and just drag all of these clips or somehow remove these things so that you have all the files, these files in a singular folder that actually think the best way to do this is to have a folder like that. And just drag them into that one. There we go. Nice and clean. Now I have all the individual clips in the same folder. We're going to click here and we're going to copy. We're going to go here and we're going to paste and we're going to write. Here I have a folder, this folder. I need a Python code that goes into this folder and looks for MP4 files. They have numeric names from clip 0 to clip 1 and so on. I need a Python code to concat these videos together, numeric order into one video. And here I'm giving it an output. This is the output full. Actually, let's just do it like this. So there, and we should call the video finished dot mp4 there we go enter and it's writing the code so normally i would create a new test file that would be like the second test file but i'm just gonna save over the old one because i already had a have a functional code set up for this so copy paste save here is the code you can look at it let's actually give it a better view for you zoom in a tiny bit here is the finalized code from ChatGPT, but I showcased to you how you can create this code yourself from ChatGPT, writing the key components. But we're gonna click Python test P, enter, and let's see, ah, something problem. Name was not defined. So, perfect example. What you do now is copy paste this, you go to ChatGPT, and you print and click enter. And it's gonna say, I'm sorry, I made a mistake and it's correcting the code for you. Copy, paste, save. Let's zoom out a bit. It's a little bit too much zoomed in. Test P, enter. There's a syntax error. Simple, go here, copy, paste, enter. Let Python write the code again. Test again. And uh, nothing is happening, which is a good sign. It means that it's actually working. Look at that. It is uh, writing audio. Okay, it's doing some f temporary audio stuff. So whenever you do this kind of stuff, the code is usually doing, there are very, how, how I wanna put it is, there are various different methods of how a co Python code could concat videos back together again. But as you can see up there, we are creating the finished output. And you can see a progress bar of 32% climbing currently. And boom, it's finished. And here it is, eight minutes and six seconds. That is because we did not use the modified timestamp uh, trick that I used before. But the original video is eight minutes and 54 seconds. And the output video is eight minutes and six seconds. So we removed almost a entire minute. But I wanna stress that when you're asking a chat GPT or something like this, you could use Bard or anything really, they might give you different things. So let's say that you're copy pasting the text that I had in my description below of the video and another person is copying the exact same text. You might get different results from ChatGPT. And like you saw in this video, ChatGPT created a secondary method very different from my original method. So you might need to go back and communicate. For example, if you are unhappy with the result, is there a different method we could use to concat videos and it's gonna give you some more examples and the trick is to basically sit and communicate this is uh, the ffmpeg version actually that's actually interesting because that is the version that i actually use so here one version here a second version and you might be unsatisfied with some of the results you get from the initial tryout creating this Python code. But once again, try to communicate with ChatGPT, tell it what's wrong and communicate if you can figure out a better solution. When you're trying to create codes, it's often problem solving. You receive a problem, 
and you're trying to figure out how you're going to solve that problem. But this was a very fast video tutorial on how to create your own jump cutter with a Python code. Created by ChatGPT and some creativity from your own human brain. It is also the code that I have basically that created this entire video. I basically just sat home with my paddle, this thing right here. So when I hold down, I'm turning on my audio and when I release, I'm not gonna release because if, if I release, you won't hear me. And if you won't hear me, the Python code that you've currently seen is going to remove that. But if I release this, I will terminate the odd or turn off the audio from this microphone and boom, I have basically Clicking, holding this down means I'm recording, releasing it means I'm no longer recording. And that's basically how I recorded this entire video and most of my videos. And with this Python code, creating videos and together with this makes it super fast and efficient. Because I am lazy and I like to automate things. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments below and I will do my very best trying to answer those questions. Making Python code with ChatGPT is a endurance thing and it takes some time but i might be able to help out until then take care guys and i'll see you in the next video